Well, good evening. Let's just say this. Managing your time and sticking to a schedule can be really tricky. It seems like there's never enough time in the 24 hours that we all have in a day to get everything done that we thought we were going to get done. Don't worry. Tonight, I'll share with you some tips on how to effectively manage your calendar. One of the essential parts of your productivity system. Hi, I'm Florence. I'm your host. I help you find time and remove friction points in your workflows and your tools so that you have effective ways to do the thing that's important to you to create value in your life. So I'm just going to say this, stick around tonight because I'm going to share a resource with you that you can use right away and it will go straight to your calendar. Thank you for joining us. It is the Purposeful Productivity Show. Let's get right into it. So before I get into content, I always like to know who's out there with us. So I'm going to say hello to a few folks who have shown up this evening and we're going to start with this gentleman because he knows exactly how much time we have in a day we have 1440 minutes i love that number i love it love it love it welcome to the show tonight roy glad to have you in the building we also have our community manager frank jackson in the building and I am glad to have you here as always. Not only are you our community manager, you're also my best friend in the world. And so I know you're always looking out for me. Glad to have you. And of course, this young lady, I'm always happy to see her, Denise Jordan with This and That with Denise Jordan. Denise, I hope you are doing well. Things are coming along and uh, you're, you're feeling good and, and everything. So glad to have you here. So we're gonna go, get right into the information. And tonight it's about mastering your schedule and how to make every day count. How to make that 1,440 minutes every day that we have count. So we're gonna do three, talk about three things today. Calendar time blocking, which you may have heard of, but you may not have ever done. We're going to talk about calendar color coding, which also you may <laughs> you may have heard of, but you may never have used. And then we're going to talk about some calendar management skills that really make a difference in how do you manage this 1,440 minutes that some of our community are reminding me that we have. And I have to put this up here because I just think it is fabulous. I'm learning something all the time from the community. So Roy says he now has an app that counts down 1,440 minutes. Roy, if you wouldn't mind, if you drop the name of that app in the chat, it would be wonderful to share with the community. And of course, none other than Mr. Walter Strong from Wal the Huddle with Walter Strong the third and i want to say thank you last week you did phenomenal thank you for being on the show and being my very first guest host and teaching me how to get set up to work with the guest host so let's jump into the very first topic and that is time blocking and why am i starting with this well because calendar management in and of itself is a crucial crucial skill and time blocking is a really fundamental un to understand it and to use it effectively will really set you up. It's in my opinion, this is my opinion and in my life, time blocking sets the foundation, it's the floor of everything else that happens in my calendar because I use it as the foundation point. So we're gonna talk about what it is how to use it, how to set it up, and then I have a special treat for you. I do want to say good evening to someone who is a legend out here in these digital streets, Mr. James Hicks. Thank you all the way from the West Coast. Thank you, sir, for being with us, and I appreciate your feedback. So what is time blocking about? Time blocking is a technique that we use 
to specify really blocks of time for various ways and tasks in our calendar throughout a day. In my world, I don't time block every day. What I've done and what I suggest others do is set up what your time block calendar is going to be in general and then measure every other event, activity, or task against that time block. It's not, you don't go in and do this every day. You set it, you work with it, and we're going to tell you how to work with it, and then you measure the success of it. You track your progress. It involves scheduling your day so that you can see clearly, very quickly, defined blocks of time that you dedicate to specific types of activities or specific activities. So this helps you do a couple of things. Number one, it helps you cut down on distractions. If you block time to write, then there's nothing else to be thinking about except in that block of time, writing. Whatever it is you're writing, whether it's a blog, whether it's a video script, whether it's a speech you have to give, whether it's a report you have to write, it doesn't matter. But if you've set that side, time aside to write, then that's the thing you're focusing on. So it helps you focus. It helps you focus. It also helps you get through your work faster. And the reason it does that is because you are focusing on a specific thing at that time. You're not doing the thing that they all lied and told us we could do, which is multitask. Don't believe it. Our brains does not, do not multitask. Multitasking is not doing some work and listening to music in the background, if you happen to be a person who can listen to music in the background. Multitasking is I'm trying to write and I'm trying to be over here doing social media at the same time posting. Those are two different things and our brain is not going to handle it well. So using time blocking helps you to focus and be efficient in your time and also helps you complete it because for that very reason, you're doing it and you're going to get it done. It also helps you start to understand how long it takes you to complete work. I'm going to use writing as an example because I write pretty much every day. If you plan to write a thousand words every day, if you're writing a book, you're writing a blog, you're writing an article, whatever, you're writing a speech, you're writing a video script, whatever it is you're writing, you're writing in your journal, and your goal is to write a thousand words every day, you block out, let's say, an hour. But let's say over time, because you're doing it every day and you've got that hour blocked, you find that you can write those thousand words in 30 minutes. You wouldn't know it if you're not time blocking and you're not tracking how much time it's actually taking you. It's not that you, you blocked an hour, but if your goal is a thousand words and you write that thousand words in 30 minutes, you've gotten it done, you've been consistent, you've learned to be more efficient because you're focusing on that particular time. James Hicks, I know you love this word and I love this word too, so I use it a lot. It also helps you to stop procrastinating. This is one that gets us all, me included, procrastination, woo wee. But because you blocked out the time and you can see everything else that you block time for, you know when you procrastinate on that writing for that hour or those thousand words, you gotta figure out somewhere else to put it to get it done. It will motivate you to go ahead, get your pen and paper out or pull your keyboard out, open up your writing app and get to writing. Okay. It also reduces distractions. And I said that earlier, but it really does. If you know you're blocked an hour for something specific, then you don't need to keep checking your calendar. You don't need to be looking at social media or watching your phone or texting someone or making a phone call because that time you've set aside and devoted it to whatever that is. I'm going to use writing as the example tonight. It doesn't matter what the time is, but I'm going to say you block that hour to write. So 
Those are some of the benefits and the reason you would want to do it. It also helps you plan your day, your week, your month in advance. If you time block and when you time block, you know the blocks of time that you have set aside to write, to plan, to be with your family, to work out, to cook, to eat. Yes, because we've got to do those things, right? To be creative for your spiritual life. You can see it and flexible time, by the way, because you do need to keep flexible time in your calendar. That's essentially what I call putting overalls on my calendar because it's working for me. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to figure out what it's doing. I just have to do the thing that it's telling me to do at the time that I decided to do it. If you have time blocked, I'm going to encourage you to put a yes in the chat. Yes, if you've ever used this skill and this strategy of time blocking. Put a yes in the chat. If you're not um, with us in chat tonight, leave a comment after the show in the comment and just say yes. I'll know that you, that means you use, you've used time blocking. So how do you do this? What do you need to set it up? Well, the most obvious thing you need is a calendar. You need a calendar. You can use a paper calendar, although it's a little more challenging, but you can use a paper calendar. I would submit you want to use a digital calendar to do this, to effectively set it up. And so some examples, you can use different ones, and I'm going to talk about and mention six. The more traditional calendar you can use by creating just, if you're using Google Calendar is one of those, create a blank calendar, write in the software, and name it Time Blocking and set your time block up in that calendar. You can use Outlook calendar the same way, plain old everyday traditional calendar that we all use. We can use Apple calendar exactly the same way. Create a blank calendar, name it time block, and build out your time block. If you are a person who like using all-in-one type applications, you can use ClickUp because it has a calendar component in it. You can use Notion because it has a calendar component in, and you can use Trello. I prefer, personally, the more traditional style calendars for this purpose. But you can use any of those types as long as you have a calendar that you can see monthly, weekly, daily, and you can see those time blocks set up. So I'm going to tell you the shortcut way to do this. Are you ready? Lean in and listen to this because you're going to be really excited. Use ChatGPT to build your time block schedule. If you have done that, put yes in the chat or put yes in the comment. If you've worked on your time blocking schedule and you figured out the right prompt to use to have ChatGPT build it for you, put yes in the chat. If you haven't, put no in the chat. You will love this. I actually was reworking mine and I wrote several prompts to, uh, I'm going to talk about color coding and I'll come back to that. I used several prompts to get my revised time block calendar just the way I wanted instead of me sitting there moving things around and figuring it out. I wrote the prompt. And I put it in the chat GPT and all then I had to do was follow what chat GPT gave back to me. Okay. So that's secret number one. If you've never done it and even if you have, use chat GPT to build it. And how do you do that? First of all, list all of your constraints out. And if you, you, you haven't really thought about it, just get a piece of paper, get a notepad, whatever. Apple Notes will work. Write out all your constraints. Example, you have a nine to five job. <laughs> you have a nine to five job and you work, say, from 730 to 330. 
You have a day corporate job. So that's a constraint. That's one. You have family time that you've committed to at a certain time. That's another constraint. You have, if you are produce YouTube videos or you have a podcast or anything like that, the times that you've set aside for those activities, that's a constraint. So all of the constraints that you already know that you have, put them down, write them down. Then I would say estimate the amount of time that they will take. If you need, by the way, constraint, you got to sleep. If you need eight hours of sleep or you use five hours of sleep a night, write that down. These are the constraints or the parameters that you're going to feed chat GPT in order for it to build your time blocking schedule for you. <laughs> and all, all of those are constraints. If you plan 30 minutes to eat three meals a day, put that in another constraint. So whatever your constraints are, just write them down so that you can put them in. So here is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give it to you a little bit early because I'm going to say it again, but I have built this prompt and it's available to you. How I set it up, how I organized it, how I labeled it, I will tell you how you can get a sample. Then all you've got to do is modify the sample to fit your needs. So if you've never thought of doing this, this is probably a really good one to try. So, and James Hicks, you can put that in the next book, sir. Teach these people. Um, and I'm going to talk about distractions a little bit. Really think about as you're doing this, what are your real distractions? Is it social media when you're not supposed to be or a plan to look at it? Is it you answer the phone every time it rings? Is it you have too many notifications going off and you just now, you ignore them because there's a notification going off for everything. So now that it's just noise and you don't even pay attention, whatever your distractions are, write those down so that you're aware of them. So, and then once you've identified them, write a plan to eliminate them. Because when you put your time block in, you're not going to be able to do all that distracting stuff because this is going to tell you how to use all 24 hours in a day. Okay. So here are a couple of mistakes that you want to avoid when you set up your time block. One is not being realistic about how long activities will take. I'll give you an example. Uh, one member of the community does a half an hour live stream show and they plan a half an hour before they start to be in place. Being realistic about that it's important. If you know you need that extra time, make sure you account for it. But if you have no idea how long it takes you to do certain things, like write a thousand pages, then give yourself a little bit more time than less. Don't try to shorten it artificially until you've gotten enough data to substantiate that you can shorten the time. The other one is not allowing time, flex, what I call flexible time, but time for breaks. Remember to keep that time in your calendar, in your, in your time block calendar. And then this is a big one. Even though you have a time block calendar, don't forget to be flexible. If, uh, if you're inflexible, when the emergency shows up, someone in the household gets sick, something happens to the car, a client calls that has an emergency, anything like that, if you're so inflexible with this time blocking, then it's just going to become a stressor for you. So those are some mistakes I would encourage you to uh, avoid in time blocking. Okay. 
So now we did get a question from a member of the community. And that question was, let me see, I should have tagged it. Let me go back and get it. Here it is. Uh, let me. Okay. The question is, are there any standard color coding that a person should be using when color coding their Google Calendar? Well, there isn't a standard color. And we're going to talk about the next strategy, which is color coding the next strategy that I'm gonna recommend that you use. And you can use this in conjunction with color, uh, time blocking. And color coding fits in with everything in your time block as well as your regular day-to-day -day calendar for appointments and activities that are on the day. It is efficient and it's effective, uh, an effect, effective way to organize your calendar by assigning different colors to specific events activities or categories because it helps you see at a glance what the time is committed to. Let me give you an example of how I use this. Um, in my corporate work, I have a specific color that means I'm in client meetings. Those are not movable for me. I don't move them. Now, here's how I tie it together. I specifically target sp days for client meetings. So when I'm scheduling client meetings, I'm using that time block time blocking to schedule those color coded client meetings in those times to as much as I can possibly put them into those times. We all know occasionally something will go outside of that. But my first rule of thumb is if I'm scheduling a t client meeting or a client wants to meet with me, that time is going to go, I'm going to tell them those times that I've time blocked for that. I then have standard, you know, administrative stuff you got to do. Approved timesheets, all that kind of stuff. I color code those activities as well, and I've time blocked them. I know exactly what day of the week when I'm going to do that work. It's standing recurring work. It's got to be done, and I usually do it at the time that it's scheduled. But I use a separate color for that because it's more my leadership and administrative type activities, and I can separate them, and I can move those easier than I can a client work. I also use a color for me personally, Florence, as I say with all my extraness, I use a specific color. Why? I find I'm important to me. So I want to see those times that I've blocked and see it quickly, things that are for me. I use it for things like I actually want to take time and eat. I want to take time to plan. Time blocked my time, my planning and a few other things that are important to me. So I use a separate color for that. So with respect to a standard color, the short answer is any color that resonates with you. This is a place where you can be really creative and colors that have meaning for you. Bright yellow is my client color. If I see something in my calendar that's bright yellow, I know. It says client, client, I don't even have to know what it is. I know it's something for the client. On my time block calendar, it's also client time. It's also bright yellow. It's ugly, but it stands out. Okay. I use pink, girl color, pink for me personally, because it, I like the color and I've just always used pink for me. I use a purple, a dark purple for anything that's my spiritual life because that has meaning to me specifically. So use colors that have meaning to you. And that's really the only rule is to just use colors that have meaning to you. Um, some of the others you could separate by categories, work versus um, your your business versus your content creation versus your volunteer service versus spiritual life. You could do colors for fa different family members. So it really depends on how your life flows as to how you use the colors. You could even be so 
detailed as to say within a certain type of work. And since I know who asked the question, I'm going to use one color for when I'm doing creative work. I'm going to use like making graphics. I'm going to use another color when I time block to do promotions and social media. I'm going to use another color when I'm doing coaching calls. And, and I'm going to use another color when I'm doing learning. So there's no one right way, but those categories is what's important. And then using colors that are for you. Using colors also allows you to be creative. It releases the creativity in your brain and then you're good to go. Great, Walter, uh, Roy, you use color code for your, um, for your, you have one color for solo shows and another color for when you have a guest on the show. That's a great use for it. Okay. So you have freedom to use whatever color makes sense to you. Okay. So putting those two together, time blocking first, do that first. Then color code according to the categories that are important to you and the ones that would resonate with you that you can be consistent in using. Roy shared that he uses colors for the type of shows he's doing. So as long as he's always consistent and if he sees on his calendar a red code for solo shows, Every time he's doing a solo show and it's red, his brain will remember that. If every time he has guests and he uses blue, his brain will remember that. If he changes those colors and one day it's orange and another day it's purple and another day it's green, you might as well not color code because it's not your brain is not going to register what it's looking at. It's just not going to have it's not going to mean anything. So using your colors consistently for whatever category you decide you want to use them for is the key to success in color coding. If you have questions, I would love to answer them about either of these two techniques, time blocking or color coding. Would love to answer your questions. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the last part, which is Mastering a few key skills. You've got that foundation done, and now you're going to master some skills that will finally tie it all together. The first skill is setting up a master calendar. The reason I suggest people use a digital calendar is because it can be difficult to have a master calendar on paper if you've got a lot of parts to your life. And by, by a lot of parts to your life, I mean you've got three, four, five different significant parts to your life. Of course, we all know we've got a family in our home. We've got business, work, sometimes both. But there may be other parts to your life. It can be difficult to manage all of that on one paper calendar. That's the reason I suggest you master using a master digital calendar. As you all know, if you've ever heard me, I use a paper calendar, but it's not my master calendar. My master calendar is actually a set of Google calendars. I turn them all on and I can see everything across my life. Another one is, it's one we don't like to do. Review your calendar every week and every day. When you look at your calendar in the day, you're going to look at three days, not a whole bunch, three days. You're going to look at the day before, what events, what activities did you have? Why are you looking at that? You're looking to see if there are things, follow-up activities or tasks that you need to plan forward or meetings that you need to plan forward in the future that were a result of the day before. You're looking at today so you can fix, how's my day going to flow? Uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, for example, I had very few tasks in my day because on Tuesday, 
I looked at Wednesday and Wednesday. I looked at Thursday. And both days, I had six hours of client meetings. I had six hours. So I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot more tasks done. And I could fix that in my brain. So if somebody wanted something, sorry for them. The other one is when it comes to meetings with other people, either meetings you're scheduling or meetings you're invited to. This doesn't have to be at your job. It can be volunteer work. It can be church, ministry, synagogue, whatever. It can even be with your family members, but meetings and appointments with other people, not just with yourself. Stop attending meetings that are a waste of time. Now, I say that with a grain of salt. Don't go to your boss and say, I'm not coming to your staff meeting because it's a waste of my time and Florence told me not to show up. Please don't do that. But by that I mean, require people to give you an agenda beforehand. What are we talking about? What are we looking to solve? What question are we answering? What decisions are we making? What's the background material that I need to read before I show up? How do I need to prepare? Require an agenda beforehand. I have somebody in my life who's really, really close. And when I want to meet with that individual, I have to give them an agenda. And I'm okay with that. Do the pre-work ahead of time. This is a skill that took me a while to get down, but it makes such a difference. It makes such a huge difference in removing friction and being able to manage everything in my day. Because when I get invited to meetings and if there's nothing there, I will give the person one opportunity. I'll reach out. I'll say, hey, what's this about? Where's the agenda? When am I going to get it? If I don't get a response, I'm highly likely to just cancel it and decline and not show up. Highly likely. Optimize your meeting schedule. We talked about that, and the best way to do it is with time blocking. Set up those times for your creative work, for your client work, for your personal time. Time block that, and it'll allow you to optimize and reduce having things spread all over the place. If you've got a meeting in the middle of every day because you didn't time block, like I said, I have specific dates where I have client meetings. I have specific dates when I have personal client meetings as well. Then that helps me to optimize when things are going to happen. They're not, people are not scheduling time with me here, there, everywhere because I don't allow it. The other one is um, start and end on time. Require people to start events on time and end on time. I have been known as lately as this week. You can't show up. I'm out. I'm not going to sit there and waste time waiting for someone to show up. Now, I'll be nice and pleasant and, you know, gentle about it. Hey, let's reschedule. This is not a good time. We'll reschedule. And sometimes you're the one who has to reschedule. But to the best of your ability, the best of your ability, reschedule 24 to 48 hours prior. Occasionally, that's not possible. But to the best of your ability, develop the skill. If you're looking at your calendar every day, you can see anything that's going to conflict and you can cancel it or reschedule it ahead of time rather than waiting to 10 minutes before and then saying, oops, I'm not going to make it. Oh, I forgot. And when someone asks you to do something, pause before you say yes. Stop and look at your calendar. Know what's on there before you say yes. If you're really busy 
and everybody says they are. If you've got a lot going on, then you cannot afford to not look at your calendar before you say yes to a commitment. It doesn't matter who's asking. Respect their time and respect your time by looking at your calendar first and discipline yourself and get in the habit and the skill of checking your calendar before you say yes. And that means even when you it's electronic and you get an electronic meeting just because someone didn't see time that you had set aside or you didn't properly block the time, don't just click accept. And it sounds a little, hmm, maybe suspect, but I will tell my boss and my boss's boss, hey, can we do this at a different time? I've got a conflict then. It's okay, and they will respect you. So those are some really soft skills that you need to learn. And the last two I'm going to talk about is learn to use calendar scheduling automation. This is a huge time saver. Learn to use calendar scheduling automation. Let me give you some examples. There's the app that you can use. It's called, it's a free app. You don't have to pay for it. It's called Doodle. And you can use it on your phone or on the web or in an application. If you're trying to schedule something with a bunch of people instead of going back and forth and email a bunch of times, put everybody's name, email address, and Doodle. Pick the times that you have available. Grab the link and send them the link. When they click on the link, it'll show them the times and they get to pick which of those times fit for them. Once one of those times fits either all or the majority of the people that you're trying to meet with, that's your meeting time. You already know it fits your calendar. If you're using Microsoft Outlook, Outlook has a very similar tool called Find Time. Use it the exact same way. If I use this when I'm meeting with people external to my company. If you aren't using a corporate tool like Outlook, you can use something like Calendly. You can use TidyCal. You can use Acuity. You can use Day Schedule. What do these do? I use personally use TidyCal, and I've set up my time block calendar. I've set in TidyCal the times when I'm available for 15 minute appointments, when I'm available for coaching sessions, when I'm available for productivity assessments. And when someone asks to meet me for those things, I give them the link and say, go to this link, schedule it. It'll automatically put the appointment on my calendar. It'll automatically set up a Zoom meeting. And you may use something else other than Zoom. And it'll automatically send them the appointment to their calendar. And it sends a reminder to them. I don't have to be involved. Very efficient clear. And if you have to reschedule, it's just a mouse click in the calendar to reschedule. Okay. So all of these Calendly, TidyCal, Acuity, Day Schedule. Outlook also has a built-in capability called Bookings. It works very similar. Google on the Google Workspace on the paid has a very similar function called uh, Appointments. They all work pretty much the same way. You just block out the time, you give people a link and they can schedule it. Okay. We got a question here and I want to come back to it. So I'll take a break because I've been talking a lot and get to the right screen here. Yep. Um, what do I do when folks double and triple book you in Outlook? I say no. I decline. I just that simple. I'm one person. I can be in one place. I decline. Oftentimes when I decline, I will propose an alternate appointment time for them. But that's literally what I do. I say no. 
No, it's a whole sentence, by the way. Just, just saying. It's a whole sentence. So hopefully that was beneficial to you. The last skill that I'm going to talk to you about is allowing white space around those appointments. I do this in tidy cow. I don't allow appointments to be booked right back to back. I do it in Outlook. I do it in everything. I don't put appointments generally back to back. I allow a little bit of white space, like maybe five minutes before and after. Invariably, something is going to run over by a few minutes. Somebody's going to be late because everybody don't work on a calendar. And so that's my way of protecting it. It also gives me just a few minutes to collect my thoughts between events. Or sometimes if it's just me working, it allows me to put away one set of material before I start working on the second set of material. So a learning to allow, put that white space around appointments is a really important skill and it's a very useful one. And I'm going to just kind of put this out there. Really true, I believe, this is my belief, in corporate America. We've become so accustomed to allowing other people to manage our calendar because it's automated to the question that came about what, what do I do when folks double or triple book me? because it's automated and just because it's automated and it, they can see that you're booked just because it's automated doesn't make it, it doesn't give you more time. You still have the same 1,440 minutes and you're still one person. It's okay. You cannot work under doing two, trying to bounce between two and three meetings all at the same time. Occasionally I do that and I always fail. I ignore one completely and I'm, I might as well not be there. I'm logged in. I'm not listening. I'm not paying attention. I'm not contributing and I'm not getting anything out of it. It is a complete, utter waste of time. And then I'm relying on the recordings or the meeting minutes because I wasn't engaged because I was trying to do two or three things at the same time or be in two or three meetings at the same time. So if you're getting value, go ahead and hit that like button and let us keep going. Last call, last call for questions. Last call for questions. So I shared with you and if you have not done so, if you're watching on the replay, please go ahead and subscribe to at Equip Institute. And I can't spell, I misspelled my own name, uh, at Equip Institute on YouTube. We are growing the channel. We are um, close to our first 100 subscribers. And so that's what we're really going to focus on is bringing value and getting people subscribed to the channel so that we can touch, help, and support even more folks. So the thing that I want to share with you is, let me see that I did it correctly. If you go to my web page, let's see if I can do this correctly. If you go to my web page, and which is florencedonald.live, Florence which is really, it's a link tree, you'll see on there where you can join the uh, community, which goes to the Buy Me A Coffee page. On the Buy Me A Coffee page is the chat GPT prompt that I created to build the time block schedule. You can download it and you can look at it and you can see what you would do differently. And it covers a seven day period of time and it covers a bunch of facet of life. So all the sections, the words, how I put them, the order I put them in, you can grab that PDF, use it as an example of something of a way to set up your time block calendar. 
on your time block system. And then all you got to do is plug it into whatever calendar system you use. So that's your resource for the month of June. It is a chat GPT prompt to create a time block system or schedule for yourself. Use it well and enjoy. So I'm going to go back and check and see if there are any last minute questions in the chat. Any last minute comments? I will pull this one up and I, <laughs> I find it funny. Uh, Mr. Strong says, oh, you just dropped the mic on that one. Pause before responding and check my calendar. That is my light bulb moment. Well, I'm so excited that you got a light bulb moment. Congratulations. And Roy said, for a uh, short attention span, he uses Pomodoro Cube as you have a short attention span. Is, is that to help you focus? I'm presuming that's what it means. And Denise said, no, never thought to do this. I'm thinking, Denise, can you um, clarify or you mean using chat GPT or something else using your calendar? I know I just saw somebody special. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Philip. Uh, okay, we're still rooting for you. Let us know the details. July, July is coming. We want to show up and support you. We want to show up and support you. Great. I'm just double checking everybody to see if there are any other comments or questions that I missed. Okay, Denise, you're going to have to explain this one. What, what do you mean? What? What? I, what? I, what were you talking about? I would love to um, to hear. So there are some folks who said they've never used time blocking. Try it. It'll change your life. Try it. It will definitely be a benefit to you. So I'm going to shoot up to this. The other thing we like to do is talk about what your productivity win of the week is. We celebrate when we make strides and progress in our productivity systems. I want to celebrate with you. I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate your win. So feel free while I'm doing the final action steps to put your win of the week in chat. And we're going to go ahead and clap it up for you and, and uh, celebrate with you. So action steps. Number one, create your time block schedule. Take that action first before you start trying to figure out how to maneuver around and change everything on your calendar and create, just use the, the chat GPT prompt to create your schedule. You can modify it. If the schedule is not exactly what you were thinking, you can always modify it it's very fast. So that's step one. Step two is, Oh, I can't type tonight. Set up your color coding categories. Before you start picking colors, decide and de define what those categories are. Are they your roles in your life? Are they the type of appointments they are? Are they um, whatever they are? If it's specific types of activities within a, a particular area of your life, and it could be a combination. It could be a combination. It doesn't have to be um, all of one type. But set up those color coding categories after you've set up your time block schedule. The third action is to share your time block calendar with your accountability partner. This is your productivity system month, the month of June. And then what we talked about two weeks ago is find your accountability partner so that as you go through making these changes, you have someone who will support you, but not let you off the hook. So whoever your accountability partner is, your spouse, your best friend, whoever, another creator, another executive, 
nonprofit executive, another ministry leader, but whoever that accountability partner is for you, share that time block calendar with that accountability partner. And so that when you all talk every week or every two weeks, you can say, yes, I stuck with it or no, I didn't. And here's where I'm struggling. And they can help you. They can support you making the change. So we do have a win of the week and I'm so excited to share that. So this one, I would love to hear more. You remote, remotely produced Tall Boys show this week. It was so much fun. Well, congratulations. Clap it up, clap it up. Remote producer in the house. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm going to share my win of the week. And I didn't put it on the screen, but my win of the week is was really last week. I had Mr. Walter Strong as the guest host and uh, educator on the show last week. Did a phenomenal job, y'all. And I tipped my toe a little bit into Canva. I'm a little scared. But I'm, I'm going to keep trying. So thank you. Thank you for helping me get over my fear of Canva. So thank you, Frank. <laughs> Frank just clapped for all of our all of our successes this week. So that's it, y'all. We are done. Thank you for hanging out. Went a little bit long tonight, but I knew it was going to be long because it was a lot to cover. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Strong, thank you. He says, Major Wynn, proud of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you, Frank. Frank says, Mr. Strong did an outstanding job. Yeah, I saw y'all talking in the chat, having a good time, enjoying, enjoying the work that he put in and what he gave all of us last week. So that's it. Wrong thing. So there's going to be a link to the playlist for this month in um, right over here after the video processes. And I will see y'all next week. <laughs>